Hey, welcome back. So today I'm doing Cut to Chase and we're gonna talk about someone who I haven't thought about in a long time. And that is David Archuleta. You may know David Archuleta as um, the LDS member who, um, w he didn't even win American Idol. He got like second or third place, but for some reason he was like the more popular one. Um, but he had a solo scene career and it was moderately, you know, successful. Um, I mean, he still tours and stuff, but I think among the LDS community, he's pretty popular because he's LDS. So the reason I want to talk about him is because um, Dave Archuleta in the last few months, he's been doing a lot of interviews and um, some of them were popping up on my social media stuff. And um, and I, I've been seeing a couple of the interviews he's been doing on YouTube and also on his personal Instagram um, account. And about a month ago, he posted a very lengthy one. Um, I want to share some points that I've learned from him and I think are really good to discuss. Um, so I'll start uh, first, just the context. Yeah, Dave Archuleta, he's been a lifelong member. He served a mission um, in Chile, I believe. You know, he's been a very strong member of the church, um, a big proponent of the church um, all, his, all his life. Like even, like he put his music career on hold for two years to go serve a mission. Um, so while I'll give you the story of what happened on his mission, um, a little bit into his mission, he started realizing that, um, he might have feelings for men, right? Um, so this is something he didn't really realize he, or he knew something was happening and he didn't know where the, what these feelings were. And he kind of ruminated on them for a while on his mission. And then it just got to, the, got to the point that he felt like he needed to discuss it. And so the only person you can really discuss that with or in your mission, you're kind of, you don't have many options. You can't really talk to your family at that time. Um, he went to his mission president and he kind of sat down with him and he told him, hey, I think I might be attracted to men. Um, and his mission president, he just kind of sat there and he told him, well, Elder Archuleta, I think this is gonna be a, probably one of the most important days of your life. You know, you realizing this. Um, he just, and basically he just told him like, you know, you know, um, just keep being, doing your missionary work and you know, focus on the gospel and, um, you know, this is not, you know, basically told him, like, don't worry about it right now, you know, finish your mission and, and, and then you'll be able to figure out what you want to do, you know, after. And, you know, Dave Archuleta, um, for the most part, he was like pretty comforted with that. He was like, okay, all right, I don't have to deal with this. Um, so I can just put it away for a little bit, finish my mission and um and then and then figure that out and that did that worked for him for the time um so saying that um like i said um he gave an update about a month ago you know he's he's been off his mission for a couple of years now and i like i said i've been listening to a lot of these um interviews and i want to share three important points that um i've learned from him the first one is Repression is not good. Um, I mean, that's probably pretty obvious. Repression is, uh, prob you know, not a good thing for um, human beings and a person's emotional and mental health. Um, and especially um, for Dave Archuleta, he found out, found this out pretty uh, it took him a while, but uh, a couple years, but he found out like it started having really awful effects on him 
Um, so I'll just discuss uh, those effects really fast. Um, so he came back and he started trying to date women. However, there was never that connection with any of the women he dated. He didn't feel that like strong desire, you know, that um, strong desire to be with them, that, that, I don't know, spark if you want to say. It was never really there. He was really disappointed in his, uh, his relationships due to that. So I think um, for the most part, um, he stayed away from dating and um and he thought in his mind you know like maybe if he just kept on trying to date women um that you know his homosexual um uh homosexuality would be either you know taken away or or changed but it never did and this was it this was like years right um, and this was him, like, tr trying hard. Um, so, he started realizing, um, he was becoming very, very unhappy. Just an unhappy person. And a very, um, irritable, um, you know, like, angry, frustrated. And he started in, uh, having, like, depressive episodes um so things got so bad according to him that he felt like he only had like a few options at this point which is to either um you know just ignore as much as well as he could these feelings marry a woman in the church and you have a family um, go that route. Um, however, he he's he found out through these years of dating that he can't do that. Like that's not something that's not really an option for him. It'd be a disservice to him. It'd, it'd be a disservice to the the woman and to everyone involved, which makes sense. Um, the second option was um, that he would date men. Um, you know. And the third option um, was that he would take his life. Um, he started having suicidal like um, thoughts, like it, that it, things would be better if he just wasn't here on Earth. And he really did think about these things um, strongly, and he came to a conclusion that God does want him to live. God doesn't want him to be sad and depressed and angry and frustrated. So God wants him, you know, to have joy like anyone else. Um, so that leaves him one of the uh, options, which is, you know, be, uh, be with a woman or be with a man. But moving on to the second point. The second point that I learned from him is homosexuality is not really just about sex so um the what i'm trying to get to with this point is david archuleta is interesting and unique in uh, his situation because he almost considers himself asexual like he doesn't have strong physical desires um like sexual desires uh, either way men or women um he just doesn't have that strong of desire physical desire uh, for him, this was difficult because it made things even more confusing because he was like, oh, maybe I can be with a woman. However, I just, I'm, j I'm just not, I'm just not interested in sex. And I think there's a lot of members who have this misconception that homosexuality is only about sex. It's only about genitals. Um... However, at least for David Archuleta's situation, it isn't. Because, um, like, he, like he states, he's not interested in sex very much. So he states that, um, that instead, for him, it's more of a emotional and mental, like, intimacy, what he's looking for. And he just isn't able, hasn't been able to really have that with a woman. 
Um, and he wants that. And I think that's what all of us want, right? And that's what we're all looking for when we, um, um, looking for a partner or a spouse. We want that intimacy. And, um, I know for people that might be, I think for some people that's hard to understand, like, you know, why can't you just have that with a woman then or whatever? However, I don't know. I, I put myself in that situation. I don't think I can have that emotional, mental, um, like intimate, um, same type of intimate like connection with a man for whatever reason. I'm just not hardwired that way. So at least for, it seems like for Dave Racheletta, it's not there's not really much of a choice unfortunately so which leaves him in a very crappy situation right um he doesn't have a lot of good choices um and he doesn't have uh good choices when it comes to that and the church right um and that's my next point that i want to um discuss the church doesn't have a good answer for him, n nor anyone in the gay community. Um, if we explore, you know, you know, this is a very simplified uh, way of going about it, but the main options, right, um, would be A, to remain celibate and have full participation in the church. However, you're sacrificing you know, ever having a partner, um, family, and um, sex for the rest of your life. Um, I don't see that as healthy. I think very, very few people would agree that's healthy. Um, second option would be uh, to, you know, he could be a relationship with a man and have very limited uh, participation in the church, you know, uh, very limited, um, access to ordinances, to, uh, uh, callings and, um, and depending on local leadership, you know, depending on Bishop Briggs, you know, participation in like meetings, um, depending on, you know, who's running the meetings. Right. And then the last, um, choice, uh, uh, option would be to leave the church. Um, I think a lot of members think that that's the easy way out. However, I disagree with that. Um, I've had uh, many close friends and a lot, if not most of my uh, family have left the church. Um, yeah, I don't think it's the easy way out, um, especially if you've been like an, a very active member for most of your life. And I think uh, real quick, the reason why I say that is for like in some ways it is easier because you are leaving one community to go to another community that is more accepting of you. And it kind of even that bothers me to say that uh, it bothers me that there are uh, members within our congregations that feel the need to uh, go somewhere else to feel more accepted for who they are you know that's very bothersome um but saying that um i think it is more difficult because you are you now have to rewire and reprocess and reevaluate um, your spirituality, your core beliefs, your faith, you know, cultural attitudes, um, cultural perspectives, um, sexuality, like all these things you're reevaluating and reinterpreting. And that's not something you do on a weekend. And in one weekend, that's something that takes months, if not years. To do um, that doesn't sound very easy to me uh, that sounds like a very difficult journey it's a very complex issue with a lot of layers and involves um, a lot of people with strong emotions on both sides um, 
and everyone in the middle, right? Um, so, I don't know. Um, all I know is that as m members and as Christians, um, it is a responsibility for us to create space for those who feel afflicted, who feel um, hurt, and who feel um, unloved. Um, uh, we have a greater responsibility than even those that aren't members. I don't have any good solutions, um, uh, nor is it my place to propose those. Um, what I do propose and I do advocate for is to create um, safe space for those um, who feel um, not accepted. Um, only then can we come to an understanding um, is through discussions and like frank discussions about these things and um, you know um, and once you come to some understanding then you can make uh, proper changes um, um, moving forward and making steps towards that. The last thing I'll share about David Archuleta is that he's been struggling with and wrestling with these things for uh, years, for a long time. And um, he has um, um, uh, come to the conclusion that God loves him and wants him to be happy. And I think uh, that's something that um, I think we all and i personally believe in um that everyone should be happy and everyone um and that god loves everyone um so whatever he decides to do and anyone in his situation decides to do is going to be a very difficult decision and to be a very difficult journey and i do wish him well and whatever he does i do want him to be happy I hope that you were able to um, learn something from this and I've, I would love to hear your thoughts. So feel free to comment and share your experience or your thoughts and, um, and um, share, this video, uh, share this video if you like. Um, I love you all and I will talk to you later. Bye.